We're going to talk now to Omar Nashabi, who's uh, at Al Akbar newspaper in Beirut and joins me on the telephone. Omar Nashabi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. How will your paper cover this tomorrow morning? Well, it will cover it in the way we covered all the other crimes that actually took place and the, uh, the, uh, the terror that is terrorizing the uh, innocent civilians is uh, completely unacceptable. And therefore, uh, I think, uh, you know, we are, uh, uh, as always, al Akbar uh, holds on to the principles of justice. There shouldn't be any violation of the presumption of innocence. There should be a proper investigation. And there are some signs, uh, you know... But you are presuming that it's a terrorist act. Can you confirm that, Yan? Well, uh, uh, well, terrorized the, the population. It is a terrorist act. This is the definition of a terrorist act. It was, uh, it's a large explosion in a civilian area. Uh, there's a large number of, uh, of people who have been uh, uh, injured and killed by this explosion. These are innocent civilians in, uh, in uh, doing, going about their daily life. And this is, uh, no doubt, uh, you know, these are the, uh, the prerequisites for something to be defined as a terror act. Do now, your what, what the hope is, do your reporters yes, have a line on who might have committed this act? Uh, well, uh, you know there, there are uh, many suspicions, but we're not going to violate the presumption of innocence. We're going to wait until the investigation uh, is complete. The general prosecutor, Judge Hatim Mardi, is on the crime scene. The military prosecutor just arrived to the crime scene. <laughs> And there are, as Rola just said, there are some uh, additional uh, uh, security uh, forces on the crime scene in order to remove everyone who doesn't have anything to do on the crime scene to get out of the crime scene so that the prosecutor can do his work. The investigators can collect the, uh, the evidence that is there that uh, I hope will allow the, uh, the criminal investigators to come up with some credible results to catch the people uh, or, uh, you know, to actually make, take some action to avoid this from happening again and to actually take the people who have been doing these kinds of terror acts to justice. You heard Rula there uh, talking that, uh, telling us that some people have already pointed the finger at Syria, blaming Damascus for trying to bring Lebanon into the conflict in Syria and detract attention from what's happening within Syria. Is this a line that your paper uh, will be following? Uh, I, I just said a, a few seconds ago that, that, the, uh, that uh, my newspaper doesn't violate uh, the uh, presumption of innocence. We are not supposed to point the finger at any side. We will report that some people said this, but we will not take that line. We will wait until the investigation is complete before we actually present any information to the public. Is it uh, your feeling that this may presage uh, increasing violence within Lebanon. Is this going to be a one-off activity or do you think it might serve to arouse further tension, the kind of tension that we've already seen bubbling up in the country? Well, the tension is very high. The country is divided. There are some, uh, you know, tensions between different groups in different areas. Uh, however, I, uh, you know, there were some statements by some politicians today that were uh, very responsible, I would say, and from different sides. Uh, they, uh, you know, there were some statements that said that this is, uh, this is targeting all of Lebanon or, and all of the Lebanese, and we must be careful as Lebanese uh, not to allow this to create, a, a, you know, a series of other, uh, you know, uh, tension and violence. The Lebanese uh, went through a difficult uh, civil war in the past, and they, they went through a lot of suffering. I don't, I don't think that, I, I think they will be careful not to go there again. I hope so. And let's, uh, the media have a big role to play. And this is where Al-Akhbar will stand. We will uh, try as much as possible to get away from any political accusations before there is any judicial decision made by independent judicial authorities. All right. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. We will leave it there. That's Omar Nashabi of Al-Akhbar newspaper in Beirut. Let's get a perspective now from a local resident who witnessed the incident in the city. Nadim Badran joins me on the telephone. Nadim, can you hear me? I can, say more. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, tell us uh, your experiences of this afternoon's events. Uh, well, I, I live actually five minutes away from, from, the, uh, from the blast, and I was at home when it happened. And um, I was just going to get my, uh, my briefcase, and I heard a, a huge blast which shook the entire house. Uh, I haven't heard or felt something that strong since uh, 2005 with the Hariri assassination. Uh, so, you know, I quickly made my way towards the scene of the blast, and it was uh, a five-minute walk filled with 
uh, glass on the street, people running, people crying. And um, this is Lebanon, so you, you imagine the worst. You don't know if it's, a, if it's a car bomb, if it's a bomb, if it's simply a building that collapsed. Unfortunately, we've had examples of all of those occurrences happening in the past. So um, I just got there and it was, it was quite clear that something major had happened because people were being dragged away, uh, bloody, uh, elder, elderly women being put into motorcycles full of blood to be taken to the hospital. Uh, scenes of utter chaos, basically. Well, you, you say something uh, major has happened and you've compared it to the uh, explosion that killed the former prime minister. But from what you've seen and from what you heard, as you say, you heard the explosion because you're nearby. Uh, is this comparable in size, in scale? Uh, like I said, I haven't felt anything Man, you, been 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 seven years ago when I've got friends that live outside of Beirut who told me that they felt the car shake when the explosion happened. So, you know, I can't guess if it was that strong, but it was certainly strong enough to make you feel that something big had happened. T tell me about your experiences recently of uh, events in Lebanon. We've been talking uh, today about the conflicts between the various groups and the kind of spillover effects that have been coming in from Syria. Uh, what, what is your experiences of what's been going on uh, and your fears or hopes for what might happen in the future? Uh, listen, Lebanon's Lebanon. You become, if you live here, you become very blasé about stuff. Uh, you either get implicated absolutely 100% uh, with what's going on or you've got no, no option but to completely be blasé. And everything that's happened recently uh, has not generated into something big, so we sort of had the feeling that we avoided the worst. But today, um, to give you a human element to this, this is the first time that I've lived in Lebanon for the last 20 years where I felt that I'm a sitting target. Uh, and I think that's a feeling that a lot of citizens are feeling today, whether they're from Asha years let's say route to anywhere else. This is a message to all of us that we're all targets. Uh, it happened in a residential street, in a low-income residential street. Uh, it can happen to all of us, and that's a scary thing tonight. You, you say that uh, you're blasé, and, and I can understand that uh, sentiment, given you know, the history of, of where you live. But uh, having said that, as you've watched the Syrian events unfold next door, as it were, uh, and you've seen the impact uh, and the tensions from Syria begin to spill into Lebanon. Has it never crossed your mind or the minds of the people uh, with whom you deal that this may eventually lead Lebanon back to the days of, of real civil war? Absolutely. We, we, of course, thought about that and that's been the big fear for the, for the last 18 months, I should say. But we've always, we've seen the last 18 months that nothing, of course, you've had incidents happening in Lebanon, but it hasn't generated into a worst nightmare. Today is the first time where you start to feel concretely that something's changed. And when you start to seriously think that things might get very, very bad. When I said blasé, I was, I was listening to the correspondent before talking about finding, finding, the, uh, finding the killers, if you want, finding the terrorists, whoever's responsible for this. When I mean blasé, I mean about something like that. As Lebanese, we've got absolutely no faith and no trust and no belief that anybody who does this can be found, can be found guilty. We, we don't expect the truth. We don't expect to be justified uh, and to be vindicated. So that's what I mean by blase. But, I mean, are, are you at all politically engaged? I mean, do, do you keep a, a, an eye and, uh, and an interest in what's been happening in the political scene there? Or uh, do you just allow the politics to develop around you? Uh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm very, very much aware. You've got no choice but being aware. But... If you live here, you reach, the, you reach a stage where, honestly, you're either completely fed up or completely hopeless, and you sort of either go one way, which is to be completely politically committed, or go the, the opposite way and say, OK, there's nothing I can do about this. Uh, every year, it's the same story. Today, today's events have happened many times right. in the past. I mean, the reason, the reason I ask you that question is because I just wanted to follow up and say, well, given what we have seen and the trajectory and the scale of the, of the tensions in Lebanon, I just wondered whether you thought that the government's response was one that was uh, going to inflame the situation or calm the situation. Do you think that the government is in control of what's going on uh, and in a position to be able to prevent uh, the worst from coming about? No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I get your question. I've got absolutely no faith in the government. I've got absolutely no faith in the security services. I saw today the reaction of the emergency services to the, to the actual blast, and it was absolutely hopeless. Uh, nothing was cordoned off. Traffic was not stopped. People were walking in glasses who were still falling on their heads one hour after the actual incident. I've got no faith in the institutions in this country. I've got no belief that the reaction is going to help us in any way. 
Um, so that, that sort of sums up where I am on that stage. That's a fairly depressing summary of the situation. Do you, do you think that uh, this then means that the government is going to be in some sort of trouble? Do you think there will be any comeback on the government for this? Um, I think I think so. Certainly, you know, we've already seen certain politicians make statements. Certain politicians come onto the scene. That's the normal. That's the normal reaction from them. Uh, if you talk about feedback from the general population, I think a huge majority of us from every religion, sect, and political party are absolutely fed up with what's going on in Lebanon, what's going on inside the government, and what's going on in different political parties. All right, Nadim, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your observations and your thoughts on this. Nadim Badran, a local resident in central Beirut, not far from where uh, we've seen an explosion in the past couple of hours.